Hey guys, this is EJ Holland with TheWolverine.com and On3, and we are here with Michigan defensive line signee Owen Wafel, part of our signee spotlight series. Owen, how's it going, man? Pretty good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. We are pre-recording this, so you haven't signed just yet, but obviously this will release on National Signing Day. What does it mean to you to put pen to paper and officially become a Michigan Wolverine? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've been waiting for this moment for years now but it's only been like a couple months uh but i i mean i'm just so excited uh it's it's really a dream come true definitely so your process was an interesting one you gave an early commitment to notre dame and then eventually switched to michigan how did that process play out in terms of michigan getting in contact with you and you eventually switching you know to the wolverines um, yeah, I mean, uh, I've always said I've had, like, there's certain schools where I've always watched when I was younger, and I've always really had, like, a, uh, I guess, favoritism for, and Michigan was number one on that list, and Notre Dame was up there, too, and um, I guess I committed to Notre Dame early because, you know, it was just one of my top schools that I've always loved, and, um, so, yeah, I, mean, I just thought, you know, that was going to be my best offer. Um, and then I kept turning coaches away, turning coaches away. And then Michigan finally wore me down. And, uh, you know, I was just talking with Coach Elston and um, really getting to know everyone. And also Grant Newsom, the recruiting uh, area coach. Those guys are just awesome. So they got me up for a visit. And uh, I loved it when I got there. And then I wanted to schedule my official visit. And then that's kind of where the whole decommitting from Notre Dame went there. From, oh, sorry. <laughs> All good. So as you can see, Owen's in his uh, school attire. He's, he's daffered up today. Um, but yeah, I mean, at what point did you realize like Michigan is definitely starting to heat up as a flip option? Because I know when I visited you before the official visit, it, it already kind of seemed like it was trending that way. So at what point did you kind of know, all right, there's a legit chance I might flip here? Um, I'd definitely say, I guess, probably a couple of days before I decommitted. Um, you know, I just kind of fell in love with the campus and the coaching staff. You know, I fell in love with the coaches first. But then when I got on campus, you know, it just reminded me so much of my hometown. Um, we kind of live near a city town, uh, Red Bank, New Jersey. And then I go to school in Princeton, New Jersey, which is similar. And Ann Arbor is just like those two combined and, and obviously much bigger than both of them. But I just felt like a very strong connection to the place. So, you know, I just was like, yeah, this is it's like that moment where you're like, you know it's the right move for you. And uh, that's what I knew when I got on campus. So you did make that official visit, and obviously that's when you kind of did make things official and made the switch yeah. to Michigan. What was it about the official visit, aside from just that home feeling in Ann Arbor, what was it about the official visit that really moved the needle for you and solidified Michigan as the place for you? Yeah, I mean, I, um, you know, I've always wanted to go against the best and obviously uh, Michigan has the best offensive line and I feel like it was um, just watching practice and watching those guys play watching the way uh, coach Elston was developing and coaching all these guys I felt like this was my like it felt like the place to be and I feel I knew I was probably going to commit there uh, but that really just kind of secured it for me because I mean I, I just I just want to become the best D tackle I could be, you know. With you know, flipping comes some attacks on social media. I'm sure yeah. I know you're not a yeah. social media guy. Yeah. How did you handle kind of being the villain and what was your response uh, to some of the Notre Dame fans coming after you? Well, I mean, you know, shout out to, you know, Michigan Wolverine fan base for having my back a little bit. But also, there was a few Notre Dame people that weren't too mean. Uh, they are actually kind of considerate. But, yeah, I mean, uh, 
the hate the hate tweets are uh, hate tweets are real. I've seen seen quite a few of them. But uh, yeah, I mean, I just I don't I don't like social media because I feel like it's it's people just like hiding behind the screen and they're just they will I don't I feel like a lot of these guys wouldn't say it to my face, but <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, they they'll just say it behind the screen. So you know, I I mean, you can't really control that, but. I just try not to look at everything and just kind of try and stay focused on my main goals. Kind of have to lean into the the villain role, man. I don't, I don't, I think I told you when I first visited you, I covered Notre Dame for like three months and I hated yeah. it and I switched to Michigan. And dude, it's been like four years and Notre Dame fans still live in my mention. So, yeah, I, they, yeah, I mean, I mean, you've seen a few of uh, the comments on the videos that you've posted of me. Yeah, dirty player. These guys have never met me in person. They've never come to see me play. And if it was a dirty play, the refs would have called a penalty. And personally, I don't. I'm not a dirty player. You know, I, it's just it's crazy to me that guys will sit behind the screen and write something that's just completely not true. I mean, you defended me on a couple of those too, which I appreciate. Yeah, I got you. I, I hate Notre Dame, man. I hate their fan base. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't stand them. That's why I only lasted three months on that beat. I was like, get me out of here. So I, yeah, I mean, you know. I, I fully, I have a lot of respect for Notre Dame, but, um, you know, I just felt definitely Michigan was calling my name though. Yeah, for sure. We don't want to rag on, on Notre Dame too much. We, you know, yeah. we still want to make you look like the good guy, but you have been portrayed as a villain, not just flipping to Notre Dame, but as you said, you know, getting called a dirty player and things like that. I've seen you many times. You're obviously not a dirty player. Like you said, you know, the refs didn't throw a flag. It's not a dirty play. And that particular one clip, I think you just completely demolished the quarterback. And it was right in front of the referee. <laughs> like he would have thrown a flag. Um, but I, I think when you look at your film, it, again, it's not dirty. It's really, really physical. Like you're a guy that loves to just, like I said, demolish people. I mean, there was never a play where I saw you this season where you weren't looking for contact. I mean, how would you kind of describe your own game to Michigan fans and what you feel like you're going to bring along the defensive line? Um, I'll just say aggression. You know, my dad always drilled it into me, be the hammer, not the nail. So, I mean, I, I just, you know, I, I'll never, because if I'm not paying attention and I'm if I'm not hitting somebody, that gives a person the opportunity to hit me. And, you know, I'm not going to be on someone's highlight reel, you know. <laughs> I, I'm going to put people on my highlight reel. I guess that's, like, the only way to kind of describe it. But also, it's just, um, you know, football's a brutal game. And I'm trying to be... I just, it's not that I want to be feared on the football field, but, you know, you always hear Lawrence Taylor, Reggie White, you know, all these guys that were like, everybody was scared to play them. And that's how I, you know, that's who I kind of look up to in those. Cause I mean, I just want to be somebody that, you know, coaches will be like, yo, you got to look out for that guy. And, uh, you know, that's kind of how I've always kind of wanted people to see me as. So I think I just kind of play with a little bit of an extra chip on my shoulder uh just because of that really definitely um when you look at you know development obviously mike elston is one of the best teachers what do you think you can learn from him and why did he sit, play such a big role in your recruitment yeah i mean i you know i first started playing d-line my sophomore year of high school i was really i was a linebacker running back coming into high school and then um, progressively got bigger. Um, so I made the switch and I just kind of feel like I'm very, uh, I'm still kind of very new to the position in my own opinion. Um, there's a lot of stuff I need to learn. Um, and I feel like it, the way that he coached Chris Jenkins from, and Mozzie Smith too, he had Mozzie Smith for one year and he was telling me that you know, he was a, probably going to be a third-round draft pick. Still really good, but he got him to be a first-round draft pick within a year. And I feel like if I have four years with Coach Elston, he can really, you know, tap into all the potential he sees in me. 
So that that's my main thing with them. I've compared you to Mason Graham, who was you know underrated as a recruit, kind of blew up a little bit later. Obviously, you're underrated as a recruit. Do you like that comparison after seeing Graham play a few times? Well, I mean, I I just I I just like the position I'm in. You know, I I don't know how to kind of describe, it, but I like I like being um, I'm obviously that guy is an amazing player and, you know, people talking about me and comparing me to him is like a truly great honor. But the way I look at it is like, I, I just kind of want to be the best version of myself because I see certain things that he does that I do, but also I feel like, um, you know, I just kind of, I just want to focus on the, like uh, being the best player I can be, you know, I, I want, you know, I, I, that's just kind of how I see it. But, it really is a great honor to be compared to such a great football player. So the defensive line class you're coming in with, you know, you have David Polly Polly, who I know you got to spend some time with on the OV, you have Manuel Beagle, Ted Hammond coming in as well. Uh, what do you think about the defensive line class as a whole? Have you had a chance to kind of communicate with those guys and watch a little bit of maybe their clips? Yeah. I mean, I, um, I I I got to know Manuel and David. I met Ted at the um, Ohio State game, but I never really had a conversation with them. Um, but David and uh, Manuel, those those guys are really like they're really good guys. And you know, again, it's that Michigan mindset. You know, we're all coming in with the same thing to win national championships, and. Um, it's just, I feel like we're all we're all on the same page. So I feel like we're gonna really come together as like a, a class, but also as a D line room when we all get there. And I think that's like the main thing I'm really excited for is to see what we can do. Definitely. So looking ahead um, at your school, at the Hun School in particular, you have two 2025 guys with Michigan offers: Kamar yeah. Archie, Cole Breeler. Your little brother, Luke Wafel, in the 2026 class has already visited Michigan. How much have you talked to those guys about the Michigan program and maybe trying to influence them a little bit to join you in the future? Yeah, you know, it's – yeah, every time they get a new offer or every time they get offered by a new school, I just – I'm like, all right, Michigan's right there. Just saying, <laughs> they offered you, you know. Uh, but, yeah, no, I just – I only have good things to say to them. And I always – tell them, uh, give them my experience with recruiting. I said, uh, I always tell them, make sure you take all your official visits and really just weigh out what's going to be best for you. Um, cause I mean, yes, committing early shows like, like, you know, it's good, I guess for some people to commit early, but you know, majority of the time, if you're very, like, if you haven't visited many places, it's going to be hard to kind of, um, give your best read on a school. So, that's why, I mean, I try and hype up Michigan as much as possible, don't get me wrong. But I also tell them, you know, you still got to, you know, weigh out all your options. So pick the schools you're interested in and, and take a visit to it, you know. Let's get to know you away from the field a little bit. Um, you're one of my favorite recruits because I like watching you play football. But also I just find you entertaining because you're funny without trying to be funny. And also – on the field, man, like you just switch it up. It's it's hilarious. When I saw you play against what was it, St. Thomas Moore, you were screaming, yeah. they are disrespecting us. And then you come you come off the field and you're like, Hello, EJ, let's do this interview. And you're just yeah. like super nice guy. You know, how does that light come on on the field? And uh, how do you carry yourself away from the field? You know, I that game was that was that game and Avon Old Farms, uh, apparently their head coach was talking, you know, am I allowed to curse on here? I don't know. You can if you want. I'm not going to stop uh, you. Your dad yeah, might well, stop you. <laughs> the, the head coaches of both those schools apparently were talking a lot of shit to, to uh, the defensive line at Hun, saying that we couldn't play a full game and that we're going to be gassed out um, within, like, the first half or something like that. So – already going into this game i'm i'm already like a hyper competitive person so if somebody's already talking crap 
and like we're leading up to this game, I'm, I'm already just like the the switch is already turned on basically. So when those games just came around, it was just such like a like I was just I was really just amped up, and uh, you know they were dancing on our age with music. They brought their own music with their own speaker, and they're dancing on our age and. You know, that just got me so mad. And then we came out and we smacked them. And it was one of the best games I've been a part of. I love that game so much. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I was just – I was just – those those games, I was just really mad. But, you know, you, I, I always say this. You have to know when to turn it off. Um, you know, football is great because you can release all your, you know, pent-up crap from the week – and just kind of let it go. But then after that, I mean, you kind of, you, you got to switch it off because you can't be like that all the time, you know? <laughs> yeah, I always talk to my coworker, Libby, and I'm like, Owen Wayful is hilarious, man. Like when he turns it on, it's like the biggest aggression you've ever seen. Like go zero to 100, like literally really yeah. fast. So I've been told that a few times, actually. <laughs> um, what do you like to do when you're not hyped up and you're just away from the football field? What are some, some of your hobbies? Uh, I don't – I have uh, driving, I guess, would be my main thing because I driving. drive an hour and ten minutes to school every day, an hour and ten minutes back home. So, you know, it's just a busy – it's always a busy day. Um, but I feel like the, the thing I do the most is definitely driving. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, if – in all seriousness, though, I definitely, um, I don't know. I, I guess playing with my dogs is kind of a hobby, I guess. I like, I like messing around with them or, or taking a cold bath. I, either one of those two. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know. I just, it's just, it's, it's hard to have a hobby when you commute to school like I do. Yeah, you know I drive a lot. I drive like six yeah. hours to go see you <laughs> every yeah. time I go out there. Uh, how do you handle like the the commutes? Do you like listen to music, listen to podcasts? Do you drive in silence? Like, you know, sometimes you got to yeah, switch it up. I can't listen to music. Yeah, you can't I just, listen to music? No, I, I, uh, I like music, um, but... Even, I can't even listen to music before football games because it would just amp me up too much, and I would like, you know, I'll just go in a little too too hot. Uh, <laughs> Are you gonna get road rage off the music? No, just yeah, I mean, probably. I don't know, but I'm a huge podcast guy. I love podcasts. I just, um, you know, I like being able to learn stuff as I'm driving. You know, I figured, you know, I got this. I got two and a, two hours and twenty minutes um, every day where I'm just where I, I could be learning something. So I figured I'd just throw on a podcast and learn so, so, something a little new. What are some things you've listened to that you've been kind of learning about? Um, definitely, I've listened to Elon Musk talk. Um, I, I, I It's pretty hard to understand what he's saying because he's talking about <laughs> astrophysics or whatever it is. But uh, I like Andrew Huberman. He's like a biohacker guy. Same with Gary Brecka. Um, those guys are fun to listen to because they kind of bring a, uh, a different view on like kind of the um, health aspect of life. And uh, it's just fun to listen to those guys. Yeah. So speaking of learning, what do you want to learn at Michigan? What are you trying to major in? What do you see yourself doing away from football in the future? Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, something to do with real estate. So I applied for economics and real estate development. So majoring in economics, then minoring in uh, real estate development. But I feel like I want to get into real estate when I'm, uh, when I'm older. You want to sell homes or sell like business space? Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet, uh, <laughs> but I definitely want to own properties and just kind of, uh, just be able to manage them and then hopefully be able to like build my own buildings and uh, just kind of run, run with it from there. Haven't got the whole plan figured out, obviously, but <laughs> you know, it's something I'm very interested in. So looking ahead, um, where do you see yourself in three to four years? 
I see myself um, winning the national championship. That's one. Uh, but I also see see myself, you know, just just developing more as a football player and teammate. Um, and you know, I just I just can't wait for college. You know, it's uh, it really is a dream come true. Like I I never even thought about the NFL. It was always uh, it was always college football. You know, um, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I just it, – it really is just a dream come true to play college football. Um, but, yeah, I definitely think the team aspect is what I'm most looking forward to and hopefully winning a national championship or two, uh, depending how it works out. Awesome. Well, we have to end, end the interview with this. Everybody always pronounces your last name Waffle. It is Waffle, as we talked about before the podcast. And Michigan fans got to get it straight, even though they're probably going to post against of waffles and stuff every time. My nickname <laughs> at my school has been Waffle, Waff. So, I mean, Michigan fans, call me whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> doesn't matter to me. And also, you know, it's just it's pretty funny. I enjoy it. Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> Wayful is how you say it, but if you want to call me Waffle, that's fine too. I know. I'm not going to say no. Well, do you like waffles? Are, are waffles like part of your rotational menu or you just hate on waffles? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I, I like waffles a lot, actually. I much prefer <laughs> it over pancakes. Cool. See, you know, yeah. waffle likes waffles. All right. <laughs> I appreciate Owen. Thanks for joining no me. And uh, congratulations on signing with Michigan. Appreciate all the interviews, even though I always feel like you're going to kill me after every interview. Ha, ha, ha.